In this example video, we will go through how to prepare the closing entries for a business. So this company has a fiscal year end of December 31st, and they've listed the revenues, expenses, dividends, and retained earning balances at the end of the year. Remember, when we do our closing entries, we're only closing the temporary accounts. So again, the temporary accounts are accounts that only track information for a one-year time frame. And then at the end of the year, we set those balances back down to zero so we can start tracking the values in our revenues, our expenses, and our dividend accounts for the next year. So again, I give you that acronym as RED. RED is temporary. Revenues, expenses, and dividends are the temporary accounts and the only accounts that get closed out at the end of our fiscal year. So we're gonna start by entering our date. So we always enter our closing entries as of the last day of our fiscal year. And what we do in terms of closing our entries is we are gonna do the exact opposite of whatever balance the account has in our ledger in order to make it zero. We know that opposite subtract. So notice that they don't tell us if these balances are debit balances or credit balances. However, we already know that because remember, each account has a normal balance, meaning what that balance should be in the ledger. So we know all of our revenue accounts increase with credit, so they should all have credit balances. Our expense accounts and our dividend accounts increase with debits, so they would have debit balances in our general ledger. So when we want to do the exact opposites to our accounts, our fees earned account is our revenue account. It has a credit balance of $614,500. So if we wanna make it zero, we are going to debit that account for the 614,500. We then wanna list out all of our expenses. So we had a rent expense, our expenses increase with debits. They would have debit balances in our general ledger. So we want to credit it for the full balance of 140,000. Same for our supplies expense at 18,200. Wages expense at 320,000. And our miscellaneous at 8,700. So we've been journalizing since chapter two and we said that there are some really important rules that we have to follow when we're doing any type of journal entry. The same stays true here with our closing entries. So first we have to make sure that we're affecting at least two accounts, which we are doing here. Second, we have to list any accounts that are being debited first, followed by any credited accounts, which we have done here. And we said we have to make sure that our debits equal our credits. So we know that our debits are at 614,500. And if we were to total these, we see that we have $486,900 in our total expenses. So our debits don't equal our credits. We need to make sure that they do. If we think about our revenues and our expenses, the financial statement that we find those accounts on are on our income statement. And revenues minus expenses gets us a net income or a net loss. So my revenues are at 614,500. My total expenses are at 486,900, which means that this company would have had a net income for this period. So we need to now transfer that net income to where it actually ends up on our financial statement. So remember, our net income, that last line item on our income statement, gets carried down to our statement of stockholders equity. And what it does is that it is added to our retained earnings account. Retained earnings is a stockholders equity account. If we want our retained earnings account to increase, we want to credit it. So. 614,500 was our total revenues. 486,900 was the sum of all of our expenses, which means that we would have had a net income during the period of $127,600. Again, that net income from our income statement would have been carried down to our statement of stockholders equity 
and added to our retained earnings. Notice that we're not doing anything to that $3,250,000 value. We're not closing out our retained earnings account. What we're doing through the closing process is we are adjusting our retained earnings from its beginning balance, so this is their its beginning balance, that $3,250,000, and we're gonna adjust it to be what its ending balance is. So really, we're journalizing the two items on our statement of stockholders' equity that changed the value of retained earnings from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And what changes it is either the net income or net loss and the dividends. So that's the other account that we have to close. So our dividends, just like our expenses, increase with a debit, which means we need to credit our dividends for that $45,000 in order to close out that account. If we again think about our statement of stockholder equity, our dividends again affect retained earnings, but dividends don't add to the value of retained earnings, it is deducted away. So we wanna reduce our retained earnings by the amount of our dividends, and my retained earnings increase with the credit, which means they decrease with a debit, and we close our dividends account by doing the exact opposite and crediting it for $45,000.